to Paris was a I want to go somewhere. Salut tout le monde, Bailey here, and welcome to this week's coffee time. It's almost the end of the line here in Paris, actually. I have my first and last exam is on Monday, and then I have a paper due on Wednesday, and after that my junior year and my year in Paris is over. And so today, for our next to last coffee time in Paris, I'm just going to be talking about what this year in Paris has meant to me because it's meant a lot. So I hope you're ready. This week I have coffee, of course. I got just a little pastry at the bakery down the street. It's called a pain beurre, which means buttered bread. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be having. I hope you've got your snack ready. Let's get started. So I guess the best place to begin the story of this year in Paris would be at the beginning which is not when I arrived here in August last year. At the beginning of this trip for me would be 7th grade English class. It was there that we were supposed to pick what language we wanted to learn in 8th grade and then theoretically for the rest of high school and all that. At my school we had three options and they were Spanish, Italian, and French. And to pick they just handed out a sheet and they asked you to rank 1, 2, and 3. Your preferred language. And I remember they didn't, like, I remember in elementary school when we were supposed to pick what instrument we wanted to learn, they had all the music teachers come and give a little concert and they played all the instruments and explained a little bit about them. And then for picking a language they did not do that. Uh, they could have had like a slideshow, a powerpoint about, oh this is Spanish architecture, oh this is French paintings, but they didn't do any of that, they just said pick. And so our teacher gave us a little time to like think about it and discuss it amongst ourselves because like this is sort of a big decision for middle schoolers like middle schoolers don't get to have a lot of input on what classes or anything they want to do and then this one you know there's like choices open and closed depending on what you pick from this it's not a be all end all but it is important and it's big decision so uh, we had some time and I was sitting with my like three friends who are also like uh, uh, like disillusioned middle schoolers like the contrarian like sort of kids and so we came to the conclusion that we were going to take French but we did not pick this we did not pick French out of an innate drawing towards the French poetry or painting or th architecture or the culture or any of that stuff. We said, well, everyone takes Spanish and we don't want to be like everyone. And then they only speak Italian in one country and I'm not Italian. So there's that. So I guess I'll pick French. And that's what we did. And so I took French uh, my eighth grade year and there were like nine people in my class. It was uh, always the least enrolled language of any of my of any language that they taught at my school and they almost closed down the program while I was there uh, but they didn't which was good uh, <laughs> so I took French eighth grade and I had a really fantastic teacher and then I had continued French into high school where I had a less than fantastic teacher I, I hold to this day that I only learned two verb tenses in the three years that she taught me but then she retired and my middle school French teacher came back and my senior year French class there were again just like six seven people in the class because uh, everyone had dropped out by then basically really small but like that one year was enough to make me feel like I could I did speak some French because I would you see my friends who were taking Italian or were taking Spanish and it seemed to me for someone who did not know those languages that they like actually could talk to someone who spoke those languages which was really cool and I could not do that at all. And in high school I got to go to France for the first time and I came to Paris and I went to Normandy and I love Normandy and the Loire Valley and like all these places. I did more traveling in France in those 11 days than I have done all year, but that's okay. I really liked what I've done this year. I talked about that trip in another video, but that trip really showed me like it is a real country and people really do speak French here, which was, you know, like it's weird when you're learning a foreign language and you're not 
in a country that speaks the foreign language, it's kind of abstract in a really odd way. Like, it still feels made up in a sense, like, uh, just because you don't ever see anyone speaking, like, French in Long Island, so. <laughs> and so when I went to Smith, um, I decided to continue with French to, uh, because I really felt like I hadn't learned as much as I should have in the five years that I'd been taking French, so I wanted to, like, feel like I actually had something to show for all that time, so I took one more year of French and then I was gonna drop it. And after that one year of French, uh, through my scholarship, I was able to go abroad and study whatever language I wanted to in the country that they speak in. So, um, so I had picked German because there was a PhD program in Germany that I liked, and I've talked about this in a video before, but I don't remember which one. Um, and I no longer want to do that PhD program, but now I'm taking German, so there's that. And uh, it had been my plan to take this semester's worth of German over the summer, and then take German when I came back to Smith, and then take German for one more semester and go to Hamburg for my uh, junior year abroad for the spring semester. And obviously that's not what happened, uh, because when I was in Berlin, I realized that what was most important to me was not the language. What was most important to me was being not in the U.S. for an entire year. And so I knew the only program that I could do that would get me away from the U.S. for an entire year at Smith would be Paris. And so then I decided that that was what I was going to do, and I emailed my advisor from uh, from Berlin and I was like, I'm gonna take French again and she's she was a French professor so she liked that and so I was signed up for French again by the time sophomore year started and so then I like really was ready and to go for this and I took I even took a J-term speaking course which I think like that made the difference that was like night and day for me that uh, I felt comfortable speaking French after that course and now I'm here. So like getting here was not a I want to go to Paris. Getting to Paris was a I want to go somewhere and I need to learn a language. <laughs> so it's amazing that I'm actually here and that all these like, like France, French and France for me has consistently been the, well, I guess I have to do something so I might as well do French option and that it's actually like followed through for me to be at a point where I speak French every day and I'm living in Paris has consistently been like ironic and hilarious and just unexpected. As this year was drawing to a close, like really in the last week or so, because we've had like end of the year events, uh, we had an end of the year cocktail at Reed Hall and that was lovely and fantastic and it was right after my day trip to Giverny so like that was such a great day and then um the next day we had lunch at the top of Tour Montparnasse it's the highest restaurant in Paris and it was catered by Smith and that was so incredible and like over this year I've come to like be so close with the people who are here with me like we did not know each other at all like nine months ago like I didn't know half their names or like I knew of them or like we had one class together like we just were like very distantly connected uh, and then over the past year like we're all friends and we uh, hang out and we like talk in French and it's fun and uh, just like we formed our own community here and that's awesome but anyway so when I was like looking out from the 56th floor of the Tour Montparnasse. We had a private dining room too, because we're just that cool. <laughs> it's, um, like we were looking right at the Eiffel Tower and looking all around and like you, it looked like you could walk to the Eiffel Tower, which you cannot do, it is too far, but it looked like it because we were so high up. And so like we were just looking all around and we were like, oh, there's this and there's that. And we like knew the sights and we, um, like you could see everything. Like I was able to tell roughly where my house was from there. Cause you could see the Opaha and you could see the Madeleine and it's like kind of in between there from that viewpoint. You could see all of Paris from up there. And I knew what the things were this time because 
The last time I was up that high in Paris was when I was on the Eiffel Tower on like my first day in Paris uh, in high school. And then I remember I could see Notre Dame and I knew what that one was. And then I could see all these other domes and things that like now I know what they are, but back then I did not know. I just thought they were pretty, uh, which they are. <laughs> well, like walking home from that lunch or like walking to the metro after hanging out at Reed Hall for several hours afterwards. But um, anyway, uh, I realized that my perspective on this year in Paris has changed from what it was even like a week ago, as I was saying. But Paris is one of those cities that like everyone wants to go to Paris. Everyone dreams about going to Paris. Like it's a cliche in like bridesmaids that her vacation's gonna be in Paris. Like it's it's a romantic city and people like dream about it for years and like living here you forget that it is like that and then just being up that high and seeing all these things together it made me remember that like this is a city people dream about and I'm living here and this is my life and that's so awesome and I've been much more appreciative of it uh, since then. So on that day I realized like like several months ago I realized that I would live in Paris again if the opportunity were to fall into my lap because um, before that like I there's France has its problems and I was like the problems outweigh the pros of being in Paris but at that point I realized that they didn't if they were to present like if the situ imaginary situation where I was offered a job in Paris like I would accept it and I just I would be willing to live in Paris again um, and then after the Tour Montparnasse I realized that I want to actively look for one of those landing in your lap moments like I want I don't want to be done with Paris and the idea of being like because I know I will come back to Paris even if I don't live here but the idea of being a tourist in this city is really like gross to me now not for like other people to be tourists but for like me to be a tourist uh like that's weird like I don't want to be a stranger to this place again I want to keep the closeness that I've gotten with this city. And I wrote about this on my blog, and then I realized that my last three blog posts have basically been, I want to live there for a few years, no, I want to live there. And so I've written three blog posts in like a week about how I want to live in these three different countries, so I think my only solution is to never settle down, <laughs> to live in all the places that I want to live. Life's hard, you know? And now I'm like sad. But, well, I'm sad that the year is ending, of course, but I'm really happy that I had that Montparnasse moment where I was just like, I want to come back. I'm really glad I had that, because I don't know if I would have necessarily had that if we hadn't gone up that high and looked down at this city. But I want to come back, and I'm a little worried about my French at this point, because my French has improved this year, I have the test results to prove it, but I'm about to not take it for a year and probably more than that because I, I'm not gonna do graduate school in France. I really don't want to be an, a student in the French university system again. Uh, and I don't want to do like any American programs in France because they'd be like French literature programs or stuff. Like the stuff I would be qualified for is not the stuff that I necessarily want to do. So I'm gonna, I'm still gonna do Viking study. But like doing that means that that's another like two years that I won't be taking French. So I have books up here that I'm taking back to the US that are in French that I haven't read on semi-purpose and like I'm gonna watch French movies of course because the new ones are pretty good. I can't stand French new wave films <laughs> which probably like disqualifies me from like the ultimate francophile category but that's okay. I can't stand it. I don't get it. Uh, there's at Smith there's the French lunch table which is uh, there's a private dining room and then like French professors come and you speak French with them and you speak French with your friends who are there speaking French and it's fun it's a good experience and I only started doing it last spring semester be after my speaking course because I was always like too nervous about my French to actually go uh, before that for a year and a half I'm, I'm really gonna be sure to do that but I'm still I 
like I expect my German to be better than my French by the time I graduate not just because my German will get so much better but because my French will get worse as the year goes on um, and I don't want that but there's nothing I can really do about it because I don't have enough time to take French courses I I might like audit something in the spring semester or I don't know I'm I'm not ready to leave but I have to leave I'm leaving in like like 10 days something really not long enough to do all the stuff I have to do and um, so there's that so I really have grown to really love the lifestyle in Paris much more and I know that I could be really happy living here for again <laughs> for however long um, even without the support system of Smith and like the built-in friend network uh, I could be happy to live here I could be happy to live here good English in I am sad that this year is ending because it, it has meant a lot to me and I didn't maybe realize how much it meant to me until just like this past week which in a way makes it even harder to leave so soon after such like a not an epiphany but like an aha moment um, but I'm so happy to be going to Germany because if I were to go back to like Long Island right now I would have such bad reverse culture shock I just know I would um, I'm probably still gonna have really weird reverse culture shock when I do go back in August but it's only for two weeks it's not for a whole summer so I hope that will make it more manageable and I'm I'm sure I'm gonna do a video about my reverse culture shock or my fears of reverse culture shock again soon because I've had it before and it sucks like it's weird I don't really experience culture shock when I come to Europe it's I haven't really ever uh, but when I go to the U back to the US after a trip or I go even to other parts of the US I get really bad reverse culture shock it's uh, so weird so I'm glad to be putting that off for a while did I actually talk about how much yeah I guess I did talk about it but um so I wrote a blog post about this last aha moment on Tour Montparnasse and my blog is linked below as always and also friends made a really fantastic video about like our year in Paris and I cry every time I watch it and it's so cute and I love it and I'm gonna be watching it like all the time next year it's just it's great and so if you want to hear me speaking French you can watch that video it's I really recommend it even if you don't speak French I think you'll find it adorable um, so that's linked below too please check that out and that's what I have for you this week if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and then subscribe down below I make new videos every Monday and Friday and you wouldn't want to miss that so I will see you guys on Monday but if you miss me in the meantime all the links are once again below and I hope you have an excellent weekend bye